So uh, welcome everyone to the October rec board meeting. Um, it's once again virtual. So we're um, all together, however, and anyone else who joins us, Jason will invite them in. Um, so uh, I think the first thing we should do is approve the, the minutes from last month. Um, and I know those were sent out by Charles. So, um, you know, does anyone have any, any correction or additions or should the, uh, or is there a motion to approve the minutes as they are? D does everyone want a couple minutes to review them? Or you think you're okay? Just unmute yourselves. I wasn't there last week or last month, so I can't comment. I'll make a motion to approve them. Okay, so Tina made a motion. Does someone want to? Okay, I'll second it. Um, all those in favor? I second it, sorry. Minutes My... as... We got a little lag, I think, in our connection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Cindy seconded it. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Can we see? Aye. 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 Okay, so uh, any opposed? Okay, so the, the minutes are approved. Um, so we have a good number of things on the agenda tonight. Um, I was wondering if Jason, just to start off, would uh, wanna talk about the gunder boom and any other issues that are on, on his plate before we go into any other uh, items that take a lot of discussion. So the, if we want, we, we wanna start off with the gunder boom, that's great. Um, did you guys happen to open up the link that contains the photos? Yes. All right. I'll share my screen just so we're all on the same page. Okay. So, as you, as I'm sure a lot of you know, we have a gunder boom at the beach, um, at the beach, and it um, supposedly protects the swimming area. Um, the gunder boom is uh, quite old. I, I've been told like 20 years or older, um, and it's uh, it's worn out. It's uh, it's seen better days. So you guys can you can you guys see the pictures on my screen? Yes. Yeah. You can. Okay. Yes. Can can you open it up, or is it just you're showing them all at once? The gunder boom is from about 2008. 2008 was installed. $1,000. Randy, I think you're you're breaking up a little bit. I can't hear you. Oh, I know. I, I you know, I should go to another room. This is this room has a lousy internet connection. Um, here, I'll make it better. You'll see. The uh, you'll see this is better. So uh, it's from 2008. Can you hear me better? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, this Wi-Fi is better in this room. So we're about yeah 20 years or so. Um, and as you can see from the pictures, I don't know if you look at them. There's quite a few. I've been taking quite a few, and it's it's falling apart. Mm -hmm. And I've talked about this with uh, Jerry and the village manager. A, if you want to put a new gunder boom in, it's about a half million dollars. Wow. Uh, that's the that, price it was last time. Right. It, that's just about what it costs. Some, somewhere right around there. Um, and our gunder boom is falling apart. The harbor master has looked at it. So it's missing. Um, it's starting to fall apart. So if you can see in this picture here, we're getting these big breaks in between. Um, let me go to some, another one. You can see it on that side, that's from the air. So it's breaking here, here. Here's an overview of it. It's The boom is coming out of shape now. Jason, can you click on the pictures to make them bigger? Like they're all tiny. They're, they're, so tiny. they're all thumbnails. Oh, that's what thumbnails. I just said I'm before. Seeing, <laughs> I'm seeing something different than you. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I, I'm trying to enlarge it individually. <laughs> yep. That's what I was saying before. I said, are you just going to zoom in or? 
Oh, because I can't see. It looked to me. It looks like I'm looking at something else. Oh, oh. I see. When I'm on my Zoom, I don't. I don't. You have to change tabs, or like your little uh, tab at the top, so we can see it as well. Okay, let's go. Share ahead. screen. See that little share screen? The red, the green thing at the bottom. There it oh, is. Oh, there we go. That's it. All right, as I, can you see me scrolling through or? Yes. Yeah. 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 As I go through now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. That's good. So you guys can't see, but the, I was pointing to it. So you can see these, these breaks are in it. You can, this is one from the air. You can see this one. I mean, that's, that's how wide that, Yeah, that's how wide it is that it's that visible from above. Um, and as you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let me find, um, you can see here's one up close to the break. So it's basically like this. It's got this like rubber, like really hard rubberish coating on the outside, like a sleeve. And then on the inside is this big plastic thing that keeps it buoyant. And then it's anchored down by these mushroom anchors here, um, which are starting to come up and fall apart. So let me show you an up close picture of it. So there's one up close. This is one that came apart that the Harbor Master had to remove uh, in August. You can see where you see that was round. That was like a round an eyeball and it's gone now. Excuse um, so, me, Jason. Sorry. Carrie Sergio is trying to get in to the Zoom. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's falling apart. Um, it's rusted out. The water goes over the boom. Here's a good photo. <laughs> It's coming over the boom on high tide. So it's not even doing what it was intended to do. It was intended to keep large debris out. Um, it was intended to keep the fecal chloride matter. Um, so when it rains a lot, we have to close the beach because like the fecal matter goes up um, from runoff. So it was supposedly put in place back then, right, Randy, if I'm wrong, to try to keep the beach closed less often Absolutely. Than during rainstorms, except it's just not doing that anymore. How could it when the water's going over the boom? So um, what's it cost to take it out? So it's going to cost probably 30,000, but the money's already been allocated for gunder boom removal or repair from 2000, uh, late 2000 and 10, something like that range where they, the village had a PO and they still have an active PO and the money is held over to remove or repair it. Um, the Harbor Master tells me it's beyond repair at this point. It looks beyond repair to a logical person, I think. Um, and you, I mean, look, it, all yeah. the netting is coming up. What Most do you need us to do? Do you need us to approve expending the money, Jason? Uh, well, no, the, it's going to go to the board, but I, I felt like it should come to the PRC first, so you're aware. Um, you know, in the, in the um, link with the folder, I have put in the beach samples for the last five years or so. So you can see, and then if you want, I'll just read. Um, we got an, I, we asked an opinion from the public health sanitarian from the county. And um, I'll just read what, what their opinion was. Um, regard, per our discussions regarding removing the gunner room, he's, he attached three years of beach samples, which are provided to you. Um, and his analysis of those samples were that the Harbor Island inside and outside of the gunner room Sometimes the outside is better, sometimes the inside is better. Although the inside is, in very general terms, slightly lower for samples, if you take a look at the geo geometric mean for the five consecutive samples, um, which is the last number in the box, but that's on the chart, the inside is slightly lower than the outside. 
but in general terms, he's saying it's it's pretty close that it, he doesn't think, I don't think he'll, you know, there'll be a huge issue with having to close the water more often if we take it out. That was our biggest concern when we're looking at, obviously something needs to be done. A half million dollars to install a new one is quite a hefty bill. And if we're not gonna get the result we're looking for by not having to close the water when it rains heavy, then why are we doing this? We're closing the water now six, seven, eight times a year. So is it preventing anything? I, I To me, it just doesn't seem logical, but uh, that's why it's on for discussion. So we, I, everyone any, else. Any discussion anyone has to say? So, so Jason, it, it sounds like you're saying that the Gunderboom hasn't been doing much for the last three right. years based on the samples, right? Is that is that because it's been broken or or you don't think it's been, in, it's not? So I think there's a, probably a few factors. Uh, in my opinion, the water quality over the last five years has improved compared to where it was five years ago. I think there's a lot more focus on on the environment, on our water quality. We have local organizations like Save the Sound that are constantly monitoring it and looking for ways to improve our water quality. I think also that because the boom has been so, hasn't gotten regular maintenance and since I've been working here, that all these holes are, are not doing anything. If the water's coming over yeah. and there's giant rips in it, then it's then it's not doing what it was intended to do. There's, there's, there's leaks in it. So, yeah. yeah. We don't really have, like, I can't tell you, oh, if that boom was in there since I've been working there and it was completely secure that the set, that we wouldn't close the water. I think we probably would be closing it regardless, but. I think you have to close it after a heavy rain. There are plenty of places that don't have a gunder boom and still have to close their waterfront right. after a heavy rain. I think, I think it's... so. We close it. You would have to close it probably no matter what for 24 hours, but when the county comes and tests, and they get a high sample and it won't go away after a storm. It takes three, four, five days and that sample keeps staying high. I think we had issues. I don't have the full historical knowledge, but I think the village had issues with having to keep the beach closed for entire seasons because of, of, of this issue. But the gunner boom, I don't think was any reason that it prevented us from, I don't think it's preventing anything. But. I just sent an article. The gunner boom was very effective when it was first mm -hmm. installed because we don't have, because our harbor, our beach is like sort of inside the harbor. It's so protected. Mm -hmm. It's not like the beach in Rye or even the beaches on the other side of Emma Marinick and Larchmont. It's, 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 it's through a channel. So, um, but I think that, so, so we were having more beach closings because there wasn't a lot of wash. And I think when the gunner boom was first installed, it was very effective, but it's not been maintained. Yeah. And they have a million dollars out. for 12, 12 years. That's a lot of money. Yep. All right. So uh, does everyone think that it's probably a good idea just to get rid of it? And, uh, you know, that certainly the village doesn't have a half a million dollars to spend on a what if scenario. So let's just see, you know, uh, how, mm -hmm. this, how it goes next year. And I think it's going to go on a, a work session for the board to ultimately approve because, you know, I'm sure, I, I don't know, I, I'm sure the public might be interested in this topic, you know, so yeah. But it's good. So, Jason, start. do you want to like a, a, a vote from us that we support so you can, uh, and Nora, then you can uh, say the rec board uh, agreed with the removal of the Gunderboom? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that we really have, I, don't, yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have enough information to make that kind of a, have that kind of an opinion. Like, I don't really know, I mean, if it was effective when it first was installed, but it hasn't been maintained, do it we will, know that it wouldn't be effective if it were replaced? I, I don't know that. I don't have the money to replace it, so that's a non-issue, non-starter. I mean, it was no. installed in 2000, it was initially installed in 2002, so it's coming up on... 30 years. Oh, I thought you said 2008. Um, Sorry. No, it's been and, um, some time. Right. So, but I think there's a larger, there's a larger issue of, you know, 
whether whether or not we need a gunder boom and whether or not we can afford a gunder boom are two separate things. Right. But I guess the question is, is this gunder boom providing any kind of protection or or is it because some people have had it, it's, it's potentially a danger as well, I think. Is that what Jason's saying? Well, I don't know if it's a danger to a danger per se. I think it's just eventually it's going to come apart and it could become a danger. I don't think right now it's a danger. I don't think it's from from what I talked to the harbor master. It's not going to cut loose and float no, away. No, I thought. Something. I guess guess there were some like some of the that people there were, you were worried that people could cut themselves in parts. Oh, oh those yes. mushrooms. On the mushrooms, yes, the exposed mushrooms as they start, they're sharp. And then also like, you could see the thing is filled with like bird droppings. It's mm -hmm. God just, giving holes. I think we should just all, but, regardless, I just think we should all agree that it's a good thing just to get rid of it if, if, because it's, you know, it's not hazardous. And hazardous, right. So get rid of the existing one and whether or not it gets replaced is a separate issue. Correct. Uh, well, I think, listen, I think the existing one needs some serious, serious help. Uh, if we're going to, I don't even know if it is replaceable. The part, people who I talk to tell me it's not. I'm not an expert on gunder booms. Um, but if, if. But it has been 30 years. It has been 30 years. And it's, as you can see, it's, it's in bad shape. And it has been repaired over the years. We have, it has been repaired yeah. over the years. It hasn't been, I have never seen it personally get repaired in my years here. So I don't know when the last time it's been repaired. How many years have you been here? Um, almost five, like four and a half, almost five, almost. Not quite, okay. but close. You've aged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, all right, so we've had that discussion. Anything else? Okay, That's not the gunner boom. I mean, I don't know if we want to, what consensus we want to come to. I want to discuss it. I know I can try to get more information. I mean, I got as much information as I could find for on backup for tonight from different sources, but we can look and, at it. And again. Carrie, in the, uh, before you got here, did you look at some of the pictures? Yeah, no, I was, I could see it. I just wasn't in on the meeting. I could okay, see the meeting, okay. I just wasn't actually in there. See it. Okay. So I'm just looking at a quick, just a quick Google search and looking at, um, on researchgate.net, there was an article back in 2009 um, that Manhattanville College did. And it looks like they said that the results from a study they did showed that concentrations of E. coli and total coliform bacteria in water and sediments were significantly lower inside the gunder boom when compared to the other sites so that the gunder boom has the potential to reduce bacteria both beach and water sediment so if it was functioning properly it is i think a benefit but the fact that the one we have is in disarray and may not even be able to be repaired obviously isn't doing anything and that that Correct. study was that was study was done in two thousand and nine. So right, it was and and I think the water samples for the last three years that the county does show that it's not doing anything, not because of the Gunderboom design, but because of the gaping holes in it. The condition, right? Right, it's in. right the condition right. that it's in. If it was working, I could, I'm sure it would be. But how could it not? You know. It's, well, how do you mean? How does how would it have to have been maintained? Like what? Why was nothing like? Why was it just left to rot? Like I don't know how you. How do you maintain a gunder boom? I can't say because um, I haven't been in this seat for that long. Um, but I imagine that they would have a vendor. Like the gunder boom has a vendor that comes in and does the yearly maintenance. I would imagine that it's just part of like a contract service that there was some sort of yearly maintenance done. Why it hasn't been done in so long, I can't say. But it was been in disarray for the last four years, at least since I've known it. Right. Four and a half years, so. How long is it supposed to last? Like, is it way beyond this time, anyway? I would say it's gotta have a probably 20 to five to 30 year lifespan. I mean, if you do regular maintenance, maybe longer. But that's well, the issue. It could have been still going if we did regular maintenance. Jason, you want to go on to the county pier? Um, we got to do the fee schedule for sure. Okay, let's, so let's cut yeah. to the to the fee schedule. 
Right, because I'm sure everyone has questions about or changing things, and so I just want to, because we have to get Lisa, that. Can you can you just highlight for us what what if any changes you made from the prior one? Because yeah, they're they're highlighted in purple, but I'll read uh, them down because there's not that I'm many. Printed okay? in black and white. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you guys right now because everything is the same from what we previously approved, except the following. Okay. Okay. Um. Parking, go down to Harbor Island Park, seasonal parking, Friday before Memorial Day to Labor Day. Uh-huh. Um, the first item, parking placard per car, 45 and 92. That was, that, we changed that one. We brought that one up. And from that what? was to, that was from 41 and 82. And that was oh. to, we didn't, inc we increased our beach, seasonal beach passes last year, but we didn't increase the seasonal parking placard. Okay. Last year. So that would increase that. I don't know how we missed that or what happened. So that was that change to coincide with the beach. Um, the next one is the beach, Stephen E. Johnson beach fees. Yeah. Next box down. The last three adult daily pass, child daily pass, and senior daily pass. We didn't change the fee. It's still saying $8, but if you guys have ever used a credit card in the village, when you use the Lexus Nexus, they charge you a $2.50 processing fee or a $3 processing fee. So we raised the price. We're, we're not going to be using that vendor anymore. So we're going to go to a different vendor and then they, that would be a better POS system for us. And we're going to increase the price for credit card to reflect that because that vendor won't absorb, they won't charge it to the consumer. You know what I'm saying? They won't okay, charge. So if you use a credit card, the price is going to go up. Yes, but it won't go up in theory because if you used a credit card, it, it was still this year, if you used a credit card, it was $11 because they were charging the fee, but it was getting passed. It would be listed as a processing fee. So we would put in $8 in the machine and then it would be, Lexus Nexus service charge fee three dollars and it would come out to eleven. Okay. But now if we go to like a PayPal or a Square, so we need something more updated that's contactless and user friendly. If we go to one of those services, they won't charge the consumer the fee, and the village wants to do that. So then we have to increase the credit card fee up and we'll keep the cash fee at what it normally was. Okay, what else? Um, the rest of them are some programs, um, not let we change the price of them, that they're new programs. So we just, they're a new fee. Um, so that's why you don't, they would have been in purple in the highlights. Um, kayaking camp pricing, a sunset tour kayaking, a naturalist tour we added, um, a soccer clinic, a one four day soccer clinic um zumba kids a zumba family a youth basketball program and a paint night on the deck so those were new things that we added on programs um that you wouldn't have seen in the previous year's fee schedule because they weren't created yet and that's it everything else was the same as last year Why is the Harbor Playgroup still in there? I thought that wasn't around it's anymore. Just, we have fees from years. And we're not, it's not in there because we're going to run it. It's in there because it's just been one of the fees for, we have programs that we may or may not run that are in here, like, and there are fees in here, but it's not because we're going to run the program. Okay. It's just in there. I think we should take it out. Okay. I have no problem doing that. That's the way you guys want to go. Agreed. Okay. Do you guys want to talk about the day camp fees? I know we talked about possibly simplifying them. Um, I didn't touch them, but if would if you want to discuss that, I'm willing to discuss that with you all. Can I just ask um, another question first on the, the classes that are offered um, with a contractor like 
Zumba Kids or um, I don't know any of the other ones. Do those fees go? Th they go to the village, and you pay the instructor a set fee. We pay the instructor. So if it's a service agreement, like a contractor, like you're saying, it's an eighty twenty. Contractor gets eighty, the village gets twenty, and we do a service okay. agreement. They have to provide us with their insurance and okay. do the whole. So they get a percentage work. of whatever you charge. Yeah, so they don't get like a flat fee per class no, or whatever. No, they don't. They get we get up we get twenty percent of the of the costs, okay. um, and they get eighty. Um, Jason, did the camp fees change from last year or you said no? No, there, we didn't, well, we didn't have the, from, we didn't have a camp last the year. So the year prior, no, they're the same that they, when we approved this last go around. Have charged this year. We haven't, we didn't raise last year. We didn't raise and the year prior. We didn't raise, we raised my first year. So it'll be three years ago, but we didn't have camp last year. So we have nothing to, we have no data to look at. Right. Um, so I know I missed the discussion, I guess, last year, because it happened before I got on the Parks and Rec Commission, and, but I think I had mentioned it. Um, a real bone of contention is that sibling discount fee, which is basically, in effect, $2 now that there is a fee for the credit card payment. So I think we need to come up with something better because having to pay $30 per registration, not per family, um, and then you only get a $32 sibling discount, you're really not getting a discount. While the employee discount is 50% off. So kind of seems like there's a big imbalance there as far as that discount and the credit card fee and what employees get. It's, you know, you know that there are village employees whose two kids are going for the price of one, which fine, but I think based on the fact that there is a credit card fee per camper registration, not per family, and you only get a $32 sibling discount, I think that needs to be addressed and fixed. Well, I, I, I just wanna say, I never thought the sibling discount was enough. It's not. What do other kids offer for the sibling discount? Do we know? A lot don't offer anything at all. But I agree, thirty dollars is sort of ridiculous. I mean, it's not even like I don't know. I know why I had asked last time. I'm like, that's not even like a like a rounded. It's not even like five percent. It's like, and I don't even know what it's based off of. And nobody seemed to know where that number even came from. Maybe it came from an old registration fee and it was a percent of that. And as fees went up, the discount never did. I don't really know. But $32 is, it's, it's nothing to give people when now there's, especially now that there's the credit card fee, which there never used to be. Well, what do you propose? What about 5%? Of the of registration fee? Yeah. At least yeah, there's I a just, rhyme or reason. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. We, I think we need to come up with something that just seems more reasonable and $32 is just, I don't know, it's just such an odd number. And so you kind of look at it and you go, I, well, what is that? To look at the impact. Can I just give you the facts? Let me just tell you what the numbers were from 2018 on what, how much money. So sibling discounts cost if we gave, if we did not give any sibling discount whatsoever, we would have had another two thousand dollars in revenue. So that's that. Employees, the fifty percent employee discount, twenty three thousand four hundred sixty two dollars. You give them, you give them a huge discount. It's two kids for the price of one. Early bird pricing discount, twenty six thousand. That's if you sign up before yep. a certain period in March. Scholarships, $3,700. Scholarships, 
So, so they, Jason, bumping it from 32 to say, you know, 45 or $50 is not going to have a huge impact on the bottom line. I don't think so. No, I mean, you can do the math. We're, I mean, we're, we're right about break. Won't. We're right about break even now. I mean, I don't think it will. Um, no, it won't there's, unless you have a huge increase in siblings. Which we, we, we won't. It will always be around the same average it always is since I've seen it. Um, How about fifty dollars? Does that 62. sound like reasonable? We, we gave out sixty-two sibling discounts last year. It's always going to hover right around there. I it, every year it's sixty-two, sixty-seven, forty-nine, whatever. It's somewhere around there, right? I'm not the idea five percent, just because. And, oh, if you say, go to fifty. If you go to fifty, that's just over another eleven $1 hundred dollars, maybe something like that. Yeah. Karen? So if you, I mean, and mind you, I'm, I'm like fighting for this and I'm not even going to have a sibling next year because Tyler is, is he's going to be too old to go to camp. Hopefully he'll be a counselor. But it's just, it's like that $32 is, is just, it's silly. It's a silly well, amount. I'm sorry it is. What you want. So I would say give a, give a, well, if you do 5%, is it 5% of what you pay or is it a 5% of like, the regular registration fee or do you just want to say $50 to and make fee. it easy? We can't do, we can't do a percentage. It has to be, a, you can oh, base. So then just raise it to 50 and move then on. Then I would say just, just raise it to $50. Yeah. I would say raise it to $50. At least that feels like you're getting something. At least to me it does. I don't know how the rest of you feel, but I feel like $50 at least, it still doesn't cover the credit card fee if you know, you've got two siblings, but at least it's, it feels like it's more. You know what I mean? Well, let's make it 60, then it's kind of covering the credit card fee. Well, listen, we didn't Not if you have four credit. kids. <laughs> let me just talk yeah. about the credit, Let me just say something about the credit card fee real quick. We're not making that money. We took 9,000. No. We, we, we took in $9,180 from all the $30 we got from everybody. The credit cards ended up costing us... Um... Eleven thousand five hundred and twenty-nine dollars. We didn't cover it. We didn't cover it. We didn't even get close to. We're off by thousands from covering it. So, I'm just throwing out the numbers so you know. So we never so increase the credit card fee too, Jason. <laughs> no, I mean we should. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be I, subsidizing the credit card company. I get it. What did now? Bleh. We no, used to don't pay. use the credit card. I've paid by credit card before and there was not a fee a few years ago by credit card. And then all of a sudden there was a fee. Is that because that you guys had just started, started to start charging a fee to try to yeah, cause we pay were losing, for, for part of it? Yeah, we were like losing $12,000 always... a year. So we decided that we should charge a processing fee to recoup some of those some losses. Of it. Yeah. Okay. And but we, the we fee was always there. You guys always got charged that fee for the credit always. card no, registration. No yeah. Yes. We okay. always get charged that. We for Camp Doc, yes. Always. For for, for did, camp registration. We did, that, we did that instead of raising the camp fee. We had had a discussion about raising the camp fees and we decided against raising it, but we needed to somehow get that money back from the credit cards. So we wanted to be more open about it and show that it was for the credit cards. And it's, it's, and it's, it's not just for the credit card, it's the fact that we're using a program that processes the forms for us, right? Jason, it's, it's because of Camp Doc? Camp Doc processes all those forms for us, which is a huge labor savings. Like if we had to pay people to do that, I mean, I did that for my daughter's camp. It's been a remarkable amount of work. Oh, I mean, so, now we have an iPad, we can find medical records and you yeah. can give certain people privileges. It's like the greatest invention of camp history in my so, opinion. Is it yeah. really a credit card fee or is it the camp? Is no, it the, the camp, camp doc, doc fee is separate. Camp Doc, who just charges us $4 a kid, which yeah, is that's a separate fee. But that's their service fee. Camp Doc does not get the credit card fees. Their credit card processor, whoever they use, is the one who's taking those fees. Okay. So it's two separate fees. The Camp Doc fee is like fourteen hundred dollars, but it's four dollars a kid, right? So it's 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 not. Listen, it's if you use a credit card, fee. you should cover the fee. 
you know, I, I don't think, I, I honestly think it might encourage people to use a check. You know, if you pay your no, water bill online, if you use a credit card, you have to pay the fee. But when you register, you have to use a credit card. No, it That's will take a check. No, you put in your check information. It, it takes, it takes a, if we, if people do ACH, it's like one and a half percent. It's significantly less than like the 3.75% that a credit card is. If you put your checking check in there, which it does have that option. It says check or credit card. So if someone registered, I didn't know this. If someone registers for camp and they choose to use the ACH instead of the credit card, they don't get charged the $30 credit card Oh, fee? no, they, they do. Oh, <laughs> forget they that. Do. Okay, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's no different. It doesn't, it doesn't it, it's not a calculation. It'd be great if we could just tell Camp Doc, please charge whatever the percentage is extra. So if it costs carry $20 in credit card fees, it will charge you 20, but it can't do that. So that's why we just came up with a $30 number to try to, to get some of that money back and call it a credit card processing fee. That's our own fee that we created that the camp doc people implemented for us. It's not okay. a calculation based off the math. They, they don't have that capability. I, okay, that's that's what I thought when Kristen said you could. I was like, well, I I don't I never saw yeah, where so, I wouldn't get so charged. So Jason, we don't actually call it a credit card processing fee, right? Because if I paid by a check, I'd be pretty perturbed if you were charging me a credit card processing fee. No, I think it's you just call it something else. Right? No, I think it's, it's a, a processing fee. Yeah, okay. it's a processing fee. Okay. All right. I think I'm camped up, but I'll make sure that it's listed as processing fee. Now. Some people have the theory that you could just, if it's a $30 processing fee, just build it into the camp price so that way people don't feel like you're, you know, like nickel and diming them type thing. You could do it either way. You can list it out where it clearly says camp is X dollars, processing fee is 30, or you can create it together and just say, this is what it costs. And then they don't know that there's a $30 additional fee for credit cards. It's harder for us to track that, but it's 100% you can do that too. That You're doing it this way. I think we should stick with it. Okay. All right. So c can we have a motion unless there's any other discussion? Did we agree to the $50? Does, does, is that the number we go ahead? Yes. Cindy. No, I agree. Can you hear me? Okay. Terry has her hand up. He has great resolution. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, Jason, would you like us to make a motion to approve the fees with the change of the $50 for the sibling charge? Is, it, is everyone comfortable? Does anyone have questions? So I, I, I brought it up, so I'm comfortable. <laughs> okay, so, so Steve, can, Perry, why don't you questions? make the motion? It's gonna go to the board next, so I just, just wanna make sure we're all comfortable. All right. Okay, so wait, wait. Yes. So, Carrie, make a motion. Would somebody second it? Okay. okay. I'd like to make a motion to increase the camp sibling discount fee from $32 to $50. Second. I second it. Oh, we all second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Just, my, my hand fades in and out. Because <laughs> you have a fake background. I do. It's, 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 it's a picture I took of the, of the harbor. Of the harbor, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, all those in favor, looks like it's approved. Anyone against it? Okay, so the $50 increase for the sibling camp fee, and then let's approve the entire fee structure so that we can send it to the Board of Trustees. Um, so would someone like to make a motion for that? Let's have Kathleen Gallagher make that motion. <laughs> I want everybody's names on the minute. So Kathleen... <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Gallagher made that motion somehow. And uh, Tina, do you want to second it? Tina seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, so the fees are approved and they'll be sent to the Board of Trustees for their review and, and uh, you know, stamp of approval. Thank uh, you. And I really want to thank you because, uh, Carrie, I do think that was something that has bothered me for a long time, frankly. Yeah, I'm just sorry I won't be able to take advantage of it next year. <laughs> but Some of the, many of the good things you It's the greater me, good. I'm, I'm looking out for the, for the little people. I, I always felt people with multiple children deserved a bit more of a break than that. It's, it's look, most, you know, I would say the majority of people have more than one kid at camp. So I think it'll be a good, 
benefit and a nice, um, a nice surprise when they see the sibling discount was increased. Thanks for bringing it up. They'll be so happy there is camp. They probably won't care. <laughs> probably <laughs> wouldn't. They'd be like, hallelujah. <laughs> let's be, let's be truthful. At this pay, point, they'll pay anything to get them in That's camp. That's exactly right. right. <laughs> 2021. Yeah, please. Oh. Randy, can we go to the that event request? Sure. That, okay, I'll I'll give a brief. I'm just pulling up my papers. Hold on. So the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, we, they've been doing the walk, well they do normally do a walk, they've been doing it for, since I've been here, many, many years. Um, this year, obviously, because of the pandemic, we, they can't have their 500 person walk in the harbor like they normally do, um, but they still wanted to do something small, so they came up with a proposal to, they want to set up a few different tent stations and have people come alphabetical by alphabetical letter, 50 at a time, which is the gathering limit, and go to the stations and pick up their goodie bag or whatever and uh, do their charitable work. And uh, they want to do that on October 17th. Um, they will pay us $600 for the few hours that they'll be here. and. They gave us a safety plan. Seems pretty safe. I reviewed it. Um, the 50 person gathering limit is a is is a rule that they will follow that they have to follow. So they have improved their insurance has been approved by the village. So that's good. So wait, I'm confused. They're, they have tents and 50 people come at a time and do they linger no. or are they no, just they have like they put like tent like a station up like i guess they do something with beads or whatever one station will be a bead they'll give them like the beads in the plastic bag then they'll go to the next station and then once they finish all the stations and they do what they do then they're gonna leave and then a new then the, there'll be like a buffer period and then another group will come in and then another group i think there's three total groups based off the alphabet and how so. how long is that uh, like three hours total the event is so they starts at like 8 30 and they're out of here before lunchtime before oh, okay. they're like three hours and if the governor changes the recommendations to less than 50 they know they'd have to cancel. yeah yeah because we just don't you know that could happen that if that happens then we're gonna have to cancel and they're well aware that um if it was approved that there could be a change at any time yeah. because of, and they know that i think everyone knows that so. yeah we all know that any questions um well i think they're being kind of uh, inventive to uh still host their event in a safe way um it's certainly a really good cause um so I'd, I'd make a motion, Jason, you need us to approve this, right? I'd make yeah. a motion to approve that. Would someone yeah. like to second it? I'll second it. Okay, all those in favor? Anyone against? Okay, so that is carried. To yeah. approve that, Jason, so you can let them know. Okay. Um, you wanna talk about the peer now? That's our last item did that okay so the peer is is a long drawn out process i gave you guys a lot of paperwork um i read through it all you can't make sense of some of the stuff i don't know how old some of those maps are but i talked to the gentleman from the county mr fuccinello who is kind of heading up the project with the village and he's telling me that they have one last approval from the New York State Department of, Department of State for New York um, on the outfall jetty. And then once that gets approved, which they hope will be soon, that there'll be the next building season, which the county tells me 
is this April. But once again, it all stems on what the county, as long as they get that approval from the state to move forward, because I think that's the last approval. Um, there has been hurdles. I think uh, the state DEC asked them to relook at the county to relook at their plan, and that was in like 2006 or something. And then now they're they got all those details taken care of. I think HCZM looked at it. It's I wasn't. It's it's very hard for me to know the full story because I get so many different bits and pieces. But from reading through the documents, that's the way it sounds to me. Maybe somebody else has more knowledge than I do. Um, but when I got to the, when I spoke to the man on the phone, he says, once we get this approval, that project will be starting that next building season. It is a priority for the county and it needs to be restored because that is a backup outfall jetty. But is there a chance with the budget issues and money that it could get cut? Do we, do we have any idea? No, the money, I asked that question to him because I had the same concern as you. He said the money's already been allocated. It's been allocated for many years. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's been, from my understanding, there's been a lot of delays in the project. It should have been completed some, a few years ago. Like, I think they've yep. been at it since 2004, I want to say. Yeah, all that, all of that paperwork looked like it was very, yeah. very old. Old, very old. like 2004, yeah. 2005, like, like, there's, a lot of hiccup. There was in a lot of with the plans and the, the environmental conservation folks. It, there was a lot of issues, from what I'm told, and it seems like it's back on track now. As soon as they get this last approval from the Department of State, um, so. And where are the fun. funds coming from to rehab the pier? Is it county funds? Is it village funds? County, Is it a combination? County All so, county. Yeah, we we're not paying a dime. Um, as you can see, the village did agree to let the county use the land near the flagpole and behind the shop, uh, behind the parks department shop, um, as a staging area. So that agreement is in the paperwork and in some time they greatly allowed them so that way when they do start construction that they would stage in that area, work on the pier. Um, and that's the, that's the most up to date I got when I spoke to the gentleman a few weeks back. You're just updating us to, to, to let us know about it. There's no decision we can make other than to be aware of it and and put it and put the approval in our prayers. Right. No, I, I realize that. I'm just I'm curious because that was one of the sites we looked at um, for the dog park. So it definitely is something we should be aware of. Um, when does he think that the state is going to give the final clearance? He said before the next building season, because that's when they want to start. So if, if when I, I asked him what he defined as building season, he says when the thaw stops and they can dig. So, so spring. Uh, spring, March, April. He's saying he hopes to have the approval before the next building season. So that would be in this winter. So that they could start in the spring. He didn't give me a month, but that's how, how I interpreted it. So they can start in the next building season, which is this spring. Okay. And it would be they project it not to be a quick project. It's a, it's a multi-year project. I think right. two years, two years. I thought Jerry said four, so. Oh, four? Wow. And did they decide, does the county decide on the final plan? Because I saw in some of the older stuff, there were like three different plans that they had drawn up. Who decides that, the county or the village? Those have been decided and they've been approved. So it doesn't matter who decided. I think that I think okay. that it had to get a, it had to get consistency um, with the LWRP, and so our H HCZM had to. They looked at it several years ago. They had to make sure it was consistent with our LWRP, so the state could make the determination that it was consistent. So I think the plans were done in conjunction with the village and the county, but at this stage, if they're they were done, to, yeah, they're they're done. Yeah. Okay. And I know there was also a redo of the plans. That was what the longer hiccup was, right? Because this, the DEC wanted them to change something, something right. on the outfall. And then right. that, which they did change, the county did change, which took some time to re, redo the plans. And then now they're waiting for one last approval. They would have, and honestly, I, this is what the county told me, this would have been done years ago if, if we got, if the state and the local and the county where everyone was on the same page and figured it out but it's just one of those things that 
unfortunate. Okay, yeah, well, it's fortunate. It's it's good that it's getting done. Yeah, which we'll I, see, right? <laughs> I'm optimistic, and it, I think it's going to be like a beautiful asset to the park that to be able to walk out. I, I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's agreed. I think it's lovely. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful spot. Beautiful. Yeah. And it certainly can be enhanced and improved. Absolutely. I think it's underutilized right now. I mean, anytime I've walked out there, you really don't see many people. Some people just really just walk to the path and back and, but there, it could be so much more. I agree. So much more. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to have a, uh, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. So do you want to have, uh, do you want to end the meeting or do you want to have a brief update on anything from the dog park? Here are a few minutes on the dog park. Okay, shoot. <laughs> the meeting. Like three or less. <laughs> it's okay, give us your three minute version. Who do you want to give the version? Whoever wants to. Someone who's on the committee. Go okay. ahead, Carrie, you made the um, <laughs> spreadsheet. <laughs> Um, so we looked at four different lots. We looked at Taylor's Lane. We looked at, um, the small piece adjacent to Taylor's Lane on Greenhaven Road. We looked at the property behind the flagpole by the pier, and we looked at Rushmore. And, um, I kind of just put together a spreadsheet of the pros, cons kind of a thing, what the situation is, how big the properties are, um, if there's any NIMBY issues, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we kind of, we, we have to discuss it again on um, the dog park subcommittee, um, but the general consensus, I think that we kind of got from everybody there was that nobody wants to really wait around for Taylor's Lane to be cleared. Um, the Greenhaven lot would probably be the most costly of the four lots because of the amount of clearing that that lot needs. Um, it's also right up on the road. And that left us with the two Harbor Island sites, which were by the flagpole and the Rushmore side around the West Basin. Um, all of us that went and looked at them, we all really liked both of those spots. Um, the County Pier, is obviously an issue because if they're going to redo that pier, we don't want to wait four years to put a dog park in. Um, so per, I personally think that we're leaning more towards Rushmore. We think the NIMBY issue may not be as big of a problem um, since dogs are already allowed there anyway. Um, they're just allowed on leash, so it's not really a stretch to have to fence it. Um, parking could easily be created there. There's certainly enough space and it's certainly big enough. Um, but we, I, I think one of the things we have to do, we don't necessarily create parking spaces in a park. I mean, we can't take parkland for parking spaces. So the parking would have to be the, the, the parking, if there were anything at Rushmore, the parking would be the parking that we have in Harbor Island Park now. We can't start paving part of our parks. That's really probably not an option. Um, so my, I think we also have to consider the fact that we do have a big recreation fund. So we do have a, we do have, there is money, there is money in a fund to do what needs to be done to create a dog park. So, because we have this recreation fund that we have used this far only for a couple of swing sets. So um, we do have some funds to um, create parking places and to, to create fencing and to create, and to do some landscaping. So that, so that's a good thing. We don't, we're not, it's not as if, I mean, we have a terrible COVID budget crunch, but we do have this allocation of money that can only be used for recreational opportunities. So. Well, that's some great insight from, from, yeah. from the committee. I appreciate that. Uh, the, 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 and I certainly understand that a Greenhaven spot is like the Wild West out there. So that would be quite a clearing where the other one is already cleared. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay, great. So, so that's where we're at. We have to meet again um, and go over everything. Yep. And I, I forgot what's the we are meeting I again. I think what, we're meeting on the fifteenth. The fifteenth. Yeah, we're going to meet with Jerry too. Jerry will be there too. So. Nora, do you happen to know how much money's in that fund? I. Uh, oh, I mean, it's it's a lot. 
four. I think we're about four hundred forty thousand right now. Something wow. like that. Wow. And for a gun job, it. <laughs> That's not, well, not just for you know, dog park. I don't know. That's, I mean, that might be something that could be used for a for under room. I mean, it, so it's it's the fees that get charged per unit when pro buildings are being developed. Well, so anyway, it's it's, it's, it's a great I mean, number been, to know. Thank you, Nora. And so it's great that we have this, especially now when things are so tight. It's great. So we're putting two sets of swings in Columbus Park. It's the only park that doesn't have swings. So you know, That's we're putting some swings. Yep. Thank you, Nora, for telling us that. So listen, well, so when I the committee well, meets, we'll tell you. Hopefully after the, after the subcommittee meets again about the dog park, we'll be able okay. to come back to the parks and rec okay. and say, this is what we think is the best option. Terrific. Sounds like we have some movers and shakers on that committee. Small committees with people that are movers and shakers. Movers and, and shakers and walkers. Most and all of you have an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. People, I love Excel. Excel's the best. So, but yes, I think everyone on the committee really wants to make it happen this time. And, you know, because it just seems to be a cycle of it gets talked about and then it kind of fades away until hey, somebody Dan. brings it up again. And so Hi, I think, I think we're going to. Oh, and, Hi, Dan. Just so, and just so you know, um, there was a misscheduling. So the dog. Dogs in Harbor Island Park is going to be on the agenda for next Tuesday because Monday is, is Columbus Day, so we're meeting on Tuesday. Okay. So the public hearing is so come and come and come and hear the you know come and come and make your comments. Nora, what's the public hearing going to be on it? Just on on the on the on the, the proposed law for dog for expanding um dog, for expanding the ability of for dogs to be in Harbor Island Park for longer periods of time on leash, but. Okay, so uh, I think everyone who's on the subcommittee who has a voice who wants to be heard, that's a very good forum mm -hmm. because, yep. you know, all the naysayers will be there. So it's nice if some- And that's going to be on 1013, 10, 10, right? 1013? Yeah, 10, right. Tuesday's the 13th. Yeah, 1013. 730. Thank you, 730. Nora. And that's still, it's still all, um, it's still all through Zoom, right? So all through Zoom. Yep. Nothing in person. Nope. Will Will we be able to get a link, or we just log in? It, you just from the it, website. It, it, I think the easiest way to do it is to go to the village website and right. go to the calendar, which is in the top right, and click uh -huh. on the meeting, and then you can get to it right from the meeting notice. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, I'll try I'll to remind you guys. That would be great because okay. I'd Thank like you. to share that. With um with the Facebook page that I have for um a dog park in Mamaroneck, because I think it would be great to let all those people know. I know they're all anxious for an update and kind of let mm -hmm. them know that that meeting's going to happen. So maybe okay. they'll be available to join in and, and be a vote yes. So you can copy that you that that link onto your Facebook page. Yeah, you can. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay, yeah, then I'll can. definitely. It's like it's I'll like, definitely do that. It's, it's a like, URL. Yeah, it will let you in exactly what you did tonight is what will happen. Right. That shouldn't have happened to you tonight, but right. that's what would have happened. You go <laughs> in and then when, 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 when they go to the public hearing, the trustees will ask to be unmuted so people can speak and they'll, they'll un bring you in to talk. And, and so on, on Friday night, the agenda will be posted to the website and then the agenda will have a link to the actual law. So just if I don't remind you, just let me, you know, I can send that to you so people can actually see what you all see in the law because you forwarded it to the board of trustees, but right. the law will be up on the website for people to read. Sounds so. good. Very good. Thank you. Okay. All right. So if there's nothing else, anything else, any other comments? Jason? Oh, oh, actually, you know, there was one other person who asked to be on. We were supposed to discuss this. And Gina von Eich had, would had, had expressed an interest um, in being on the on the tree committee. Um, uh, not the tree committee. The um, on the dog park committee. So maybe the dog she, park yeah, committee. Maybe right? she can come to the meeting on Thursday. Well, so, I thought we said no more people. So I don't I, know that we said that, but I mean, we had. We I had don't want any more people because there were other people we said no to. No, so. we didn't say no to anybody. We said there was one person who wanted to join, who did join. Who asked to join, and then she dropped off. And so this is another person who's asked to join. We have I don't we we said we would talk about it tonight. 
Okay, well, I'm not in favor of anybody else joining because the group is working so well. I mean, that's fine. I think she's going to have, Gina ha will have a lot to say and she'll, and it would, I think it would be beneficial to hear it, you know, to hear it in part of the planning process, but. Um, well, she'll have her time to talk whenever the law comes about. But, um, all right, so with any, uh, without any further ado, let's uh, adjourn the meeting. Uh, I guess I need somebody to uh, make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn. I got here just in time. Oh, Dan, <laughs> Dan, a ringer. And a second, oh, please. What? If you have any agenda items that you want put on, please send it to me like a few weeks in advance. If there's anything that you guys want to discuss, let me know so we can put it on an agenda for the winter months. All right. Put the dog park on because that we should have after our next meeting. So we'll talk. Yeah, I'll I'll talk to you about that. We can put that on for November. I yeah. have another person on, but if you guys have anything. Let me, oh, please. and there's also an opening. If anyone has anyone who wants to join, who? Please. You have some names? We have two there's openings? Two, there are two openings, two openings. Who's the other person? No. Emily the, resigned. Emily and resigned, but we were down one person. Oh, okay. We were already you. down one person. So so it's it's capped at 11 and we have um, nine right now, which means okay. you have to have that, so it would be good to have, you know, two more people. Okay, so Dan made a motion to adjourn the meeting. Would someone like to make an, the second? Kristen. Okay. And so all those in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. So I that agree. was just about an hour. Great. Bye. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Good evening. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Guys. Bye.